every moment, every beat is mapped out. We're talking about a month long process just for that 15 seconds. Stranger Things is easily one of the most terrifying shows on Netflix. We've seen Demogorgons, Mind Flayers, and now we've got Vecna lurking around waiting for our Kate Bush CD to skip. Have you ever wondered what the show would look like without the visual effects bringing these creatures to life? Let's get into it. Okay. Special effects. <laughs> Number one. The Duffer brothers only knew a few things for certain about the Demogorgon. They wanted him to come from another dimension and have a human body type. The body type was really important to them because they wanted to be able to put an actual person inside the costume for season one shooting purposes. Very quickly we realized, okay, so practical isn't always Got it. work. In season four, however, they brought in animation. The first animation pass, that's when you're seeing what looks almost like just a gray clay rendering. The first pass is really important because that's when they can hammer out the details, like how long they want him to roar, for example. After that, they get to the rendering stage. That's where the fun really starts. Everything they've shot, all the animation and real life stunts get to coexist together. It's really exciting when those shots finally come together and all the elements. Number two. The Demogorgon is one thing, but the actual fight scenes require a different approach. A good portion of time, the Demogorgon is just a guy in a green suit. Sometimes he would have a, a, a tennis, ball. tennis ball at the top of his head to show us how tall the Demogorgon was. In the scene where Hopper has his major showdown with the Demogorgon, the Duffer brothers really wanted to try and do that entire scene in one shot. But unfortunately, because of how dangerous the stunts were, they were not able to do that. We didn't want to be using CG people on top of a CG, so we weren't able to do it all in one shot. They wanted to protect their stunt team, so they did three big stunt sequences and stitched them all together. Would you have been able to tell? The Americans are very tricky. Number three. It takes a lot of work, an entire team of people in fact, to make Vecna look as horrifying as he did. The actor, Jamie Campbell Bower, went through an egregious eight and a half hour prosthetic application every time he had to play Vecna. One thing they couldn't do with prosthetics though, was remove his nose. On each application day, we had a black nose on Jamie with some little white marking dots, um, so VFX could remove that in post. VFX also added in those creepy, slithering vines coming out of Vecna's back. Time for you to join me. Number four. Speaking of Vecna, his eight and a half hour prosthetic seems to pay off because the cast was typically very frightened whenever they shoot a scene with him. Vecna was pretty much fully practical effects. It made it easier for me so I'm not like staring at a man in a green suit. Sadie Sink also spent a great deal of her time in a harness, rehearsing for her levitation scene right before her big showdown in the Upside Down. There's not a lot that you have to do because it's genuinely just so scary. Number five. One thing you might not know about Steve's journey to Watergate was that it wasn't even shot in a real lake. It was shot in a convention center in Atlanta, Georgia. Joe Keery recounts diving into a 40-foot tank specifically built for this scene. Getting to do that sort of stuff is like true movie magic. Number six. The insane shootout that destroyed every inch of the buyer's home was also shot in one take. Sean Levy, the director of episode four, was compelled to do it all in one shot. He said it was the most challenging and most rewarding scene he's ever directed. The whole challenge with the one is it requires perfect synchronicity. Considering they only had one choreography session for this scene, it's fair to say they killed it. Everybody needed to do their job at a high, high level of near perfection. It's a doozy. Number seven. You know that part when Vecna's victims are getting every bone in their body snapped like a wishbone on Thanksgiving? Of course, how could you forget? It's quite difficult to watch, but surprisingly not that difficult to achieve with special effects. To break the fingers, it's essentially working with different layers of a moving hand within Adobe After Effects. For the legs, they utilize a much more practical approach. They need to put their arms through the pants so they can function as legs. And with the bigger range of motion of an arm, we can now create a twisting, breaking movement. Who's Vecna? An undead creature of great power. Number eight. 
The unique thing about Stranger Things is how they blend practical effects, like makeup and prosthetics, with VFX. In every scene with VFX, they also heavily rely on the makeup team. As we stated earlier, Jamie Campbell Bauer worked very closely with the makeup team. So close that he had his own team of people applying lube onto his entire body. Our last 10-15 minutes would be the four of us literally getting this product all over him to make him look really, really glossy. Number 9. We're all familiar with Eleven's iconic nosebleed. But have you ever wondered how they get the blood to flow at the right time? At first, corn syrup. A lot of it. The only time Millie would get to call action on set was when she felt it dripping from her nose. You know, my nose is running with blood, so I'm like, okay, are we ready? It's coming. Three, two, ah! Because that didn't always go according to plan, they ended up using CGI blood for those scenes in later seasons. It's fun to film, but also really stressful. Number 10. The character of Victor had a brutal disfiguring after his encounter with Vecna. In reality, we can thank the brilliant prosthetic work of Barry Gower for Victor's disturbing look. The sculpture of Victor Creel's appliance, which uh, you can see the difference in tone where the appliance finishes just prior to Robert's hairline. The two hour process was so bad for the team because they were able to reference actual scars as opposed to something that is completely fictional. I suppose all evil must have a home. Number 11. Eleven is me, like Eleven is just who I am now. It doesn't take very long for the cast to transform into their characters, but Millie's transformation into Eleven is a little more involved. It takes about an hour to do my old wig. My makeup isn't that crazy at all. So, judging by this math, you could create at least eight Elevens in the time it takes to create one Vecna. Jamie Campbell Bauer, we do not envy you underneath all that molding clay. Number 12. In Stranger Things, the Upside Down is just as important as any other character in the show. So how exactly do they create it? A recurring theme we've seen with the Duffer Brothers is that they prefer to do things as practical as they can. We realized that, in fact, the vision that the brothers had was more extensive than one can always do practically. When it comes to creating all of the Upside Down creatures, they had to call on a team of CGI experts. It starts usually with a, a sculpture, so we digitally sculpt things. So with a mixture of practical components and a hardworking visual effects team, they were able to create this stunning world just beneath our own. Should we recreate the scene where you picked me up? Although I have gotten a bit bigger now. You are a bit bigger. We're running up that hill and discovering all sorts of fun behind the scenes moments from season four of Stranger Things. Which scene was completely ruined by someone missing their entrance? Let's enter the upside down and find out. Number one. Part of what makes Vecna so compelling is his creepy look. You may be surprised to learn that the Stranger Things team created Vecna almost entirely with practical effects. One of the main goals of prosthetics designer Barry Gower was to create the character as close to 100% as possible. Actor Jamie Campbell Power had to endure a grueling prosthetic application process. They glued different pieces of prosthetics directly to Campbell's skin. How many pieces? About 2,425. The reason was, it gave Campbell more movement than a rubber suit would, and it looked more natural. The downsides, though, aren't pretty. It took about seven hours to apply everything, and it was very hot to wear, so Campbell would spend time in an air-conditioned tent in between takes. To give him a slimy, gross look, he was painted with glossy silicone, and would sometimes be coated with jelly. Another unique part about Vecna's character is his eerie void. The broken house was a real set they built on a blue screen, with giant red lights shining down. Put it all together, and you get some seriously badass scenes. Number 2. Eleven's shaved head back in Season 1 is iconic, but Millie Bobby Brown wasn't looking to actually shave her head again for the role. This time around, they went with a wig for all of the flashback scenes with Eleven. To get the wig on and looking proper, it took about an hour. Yeah, I think Millie has one of the longest getting ready, it's just because of her wigs. Number 3. Billy is back. 
well, at least in a creepy hallucination kind of way. Dacre Montgomery was super excited to be able to reprise his role as Billy Hargrove, as he showed when he was getting his gnarly prosthetics applied. Even though he was only in one scene, it was a massive challenge to pull off due to COVID restrictions. The solution was to have him film all of his scenes separately in Australia, while director Sean Levy directed him over a video call. That sequence in episode 4 was one of the biggest Rubik's Cube challenges of my directing career. This took place an entire year after they had already filmed Sadie Sink scenes, yet you would be none the wiser watching the scene, as they blended the two actors' performances seamlessly. Number 4 the epic fight scene in episode 4 showcased how well the cast and crew can do action. It was one long take, so everyone had to be on their A-game. One take was going particularly well, and seemed like it was going to be the perfect run. However, when they got to the very end, one of the stunt guys missed his cue, leaving everyone on set completely perplexed. After about a 5 second delay, the guy came barging in to do his thing, and thought he had nailed it. <laughs> and then he got up and he was like, I think that went well. If that was a bit by the stunt guy, kind of weird. They eventually got the scene done on their fifth take. Number 5. Who would have guessed being a character on Stranger Things would mean you have to take golf lessons? That's exactly what Charlie Heaton and Eduardo Franco had to do to prepare for one of their scenes. The scene has them hitting golf balls off a ridge down into a junk pit, so they needed to have proper golf form. They went to a fancy country club, and the wardrobe department gave them very yuppie, golfy, golfing outfits to go. Which Eduardo absolutely hated. It's actually super difficult. Just hitting it was so hard. Like, there's so much technique. Luckily for them, their shots didn't have to be perfect, as CGI was used for some of them. That shot's definitely CGI. There's no way Eduardo hit that. Number 6. Let's go to the roller rink. Millie Bobby Brown and Noah Schnapp had a ton of fun filming their Rinkomania scenes. They filmed these scenes at the real Roller King location in Albuquerque, New Mexico. In their downtime, Millie would play some music over the speakers, and they would go skating around the rink. In one behind-the-scenes blooper, Millie and Noah ran headlong into each other, both falling to the ground in laughter. Honestly, this week at the roller rink has been a blast. Number 7. It seems as if there is a lot of downtime on set. During one of these times, Millie and Noah competed in the Fruit by the Foot Challenge, wherein they had to eat the gummy snack without using their hands. Millie took the victory and defended her title against Jimmy Fallon when she challenged him. Number 8. Noah Schnapp is known to be a big jokester on set, so when the opportunity arose for Millie to pull a practical joke on him, she didn't hesitate. During their last day of filming, Millie set up a water balloon ambush with the help of the crew. At 4am, she called Noah to get him back to set, and even fake cried to ensure he would be lured into her trap. When he arrived, he was greeted with a barrage of water balloons. According to Millie, the assault lasted for a whopping 15 minutes. Number 9. While filming a scene for the very last episode of season 4, Caleb McLaughlin had to make a noise, but it sounded sort of <coughs> odd. It was supposed to be a panic scene, but the noise kept making his co-star Mason die laugh. Caleb said it became a running joke between the two, which we can only assume means the two would make the goat-like noises around set. Number 10. The scene of the kids in the pizza van following Eleven's roller skate smackdown of Angela is supposed to be a sad and tense moment. However, Jonathan and Argyle's antics in the front seat had the kids cracking up. Charlie Heaton and Eduardo Franco improvised their blip 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 banter, and every time they did it, the three in the back of the van couldn't help but laugh. Blip 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 blip. Number 11. When you're shooting a production as large as Stranger Things, you don't have much time to sleep or eat. That formula made for a shockingly hilarious moment. During a night shoot in the middle of the woods, Sadie Sink decided to take a nap. When she woke up around 5.30 a.m., she was greeted by Caleb and Gayton chowing down on full-size quesadillas in complete silence as they stared straight ahead. Sadie was bewildered by the moment and couldn't get over the absurdity of it all. I don't know why. <laughs> that just like, I don't know, it put me over the edge. That's the most I was like, I'm going hinge. back to sleep. It may have been an odd moment for her, but Caleb stood by his decision. It was really good. Number 12. 
It can get very hot when filming outdoors in the summer heat. So the cast was really happy one day when ice pops were brought to set for them to enjoy. The only problem was the ants. Not to worry though, because Gayton had a genius solution. Because you had this idea where like, well what if we made a trail of popsicle <sighs> juice so that the ants, the ants we could away, lure so the ants away. away. Did it work? Not exactly. The crew just ended up using ant spray. And yet, those popsicles were totally worth it. It was kind of a rough day, I remember, but the ice pops made it like... <sighs> Number 13. One of Finn Wolfhard's favorite memories from shooting this season was a simple one. He was just happy to be together with everyone. The gang was very split up in the previous season, so when they were mostly together right from the get-go, it was nice. Just being together was really nice. You savor those moments. Number 14. This season of Stranger Things was mostly filmed in New Mexico and Lithuania. The New Mexico location was used to recreate Southern California, and the cast and crew loved it. Also being in New Mexico has been like, so fun for me. It sounds like everyone had a great time on set, and that it was an experience they will never forget. Yeah, we've had a blast and it's been the best group. It sounds like everyone had a wonderful experience working on season four of Stranger Things. It's a long car ride back from where we were in California. Now we're in Utah. Stranger Things never disappoints when it comes to 80s nostalgia. So we're taking a look behind the scenes to find out just how they turned back time and gave us gnarly sets like the Rinkomania and Surfer Boy Pizza. Number one, the best sets are the ones you can goof around on. Honestly, this week at the roller rink has been a blast. The Rinkomania was shot in the Roller King in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Every day at lunch, Millie connects her phone and we just skate around the ring. Does anyone else think those safety mats just look kind of uncomfortable? Number two, we're not talking about Eleven's water tank. Not this time. No, we're talking about Steve's dive to the bottom of Love Lake to Watergate. It was in a big convention center in Atlanta by the airport. It was shot in a giant tank. How big do you think it was, guys? It went roughly 40 feet around and 16 feet down. Getting to do that sort of stuff is like true movie magic. Originally, Joe was told he'd have to be a swimmer. There was supposed to be a whole arc in season one, and he was supposed to show up in a Speedo, so he was like, "Ah, oh, shoot, I have to get in shape. Then they cut it. This swimming plot line made its return for season four. He could already swim before, though. Number three. Ah, yes. The only thing worse than prison is snow prison. The scenes set in Russia were actually filmed in Lithuania, in the same city used to film Chernobyl. We shot in a real prison. The prison only closed in 2019 after running for over a century. For a lot of it, I'm running shoeless through the snows of Lithuania. David Harbour admitted it was very difficult this year. For me, it was a lot of cold weather. It was barefoot in the snow in Lithuania, 20 feet below, and I wasn't eating a lot of food because I was very emaciated this season. And so it was a brutal season on me, physically and emotionally. So I found my inner wolf, my <laughs> inner Russian bear. While it was tough, Harbour found he really loves doing work like this because he feels it provides the audience with a rich experience, allows them catharsis, and says he is very happy to suffer in that way. And before we hop on over to the video store, the plane crash was absolutely ridiculous, and that's exactly what the film crew was going for. When it does an immediate nosedive upon the engine being turned off, that's actually an homage to 80s movies. Planes will glide slowly to the ground without power. Number four, as abandoned as a blockbuster. The video store is a very clear and blatant expression of everything that inspires the show. The video store was shot both interior and exterior. After they abandoned the location, the only thing remaining was their store hours. Unfortunately, those don't seem to be very accurate. They should just say closed. The Palace Arcade from the previous season is right beside the video store, and in a previous life, in the right side up, aka Our World, the whole thing was a laundromat. Number 5. Into the Rabbit Hole We Go we can't say we're surprised this was filmed in studio. It would be rather ridiculous to scout out a location for it. Of course, all of the vines in Vecna's lair were added in post. Got a little scraped up, but it was, it was really, really fun. Number six. They just can't quite shake this place, huh? Hawkins Lab is back again for season four, and the rainbow room is all decked out with padding. We imagined to protect all the children who are being thrown against walls in these scenes. 
Emory University's Briarcliff campus in Atlanta, Georgia was used for the lab. Number seven. That feel when you graduate middle school, but your high school is no different. Hawkins High and Middle School used the same abandoned school property. While this may seem like a lazy choice, architects of a similar period often build schools, similar shapes and designs. Stranger Things is not strapped for cash, so this seems more like an aesthetic choice than a lazy one. For season four, they painted the track and we said goodbye to the middle school. Now that our youngest characters have entered grade nine, and it looks like the basketball players were having a ton of fun on set, making up handshakes and playing ball on their time off. Number eight, time to drive 3,000 miles to find a hacker. They were hanging out in Utah at Susie's house. Well, actually, we're in Atlanta, but we don't say that. We're not exactly sure of the address, other than the street number saying 308, and Susie's bedroom was filmed on a soundstage. A mix of practical staging and green screen was used. Probably because that front door is facing a road and they only wanted trees. Probably. Number 9. E.T. Phone Home to Hawkins Filming for the fictional California location Lenora Hills actually took place in New Mexico. That was Millie's favorite location to shoot in. The interior of the buyer's home was shot on a soundstage. The exterior was filmed in the Shadow Hills area in Albuquerque. Moving the family to California was in honor of E.T. Lenora High was also shot at El Dorado High School in Albuquerque as well. Number 10. We genuinely didn't think this one was built from scratch. Yes, it's true. The Demogorgon Pit was not a found location. It serves the function of sort of this gladiatorial arena. Their challenge was to justify a space with oversized dimensions. It's all bleak, rusted metal with ancient brick and plaster walls. Number 11. Once you strip away the movie magic, the Creel House is almost pretty. The Creel House is called the Claremont House in real life. It is far less spooky when it isn't boarded up and is almost elegant. At one point, it was a bed and breakfast for 16 years, but now it is privately owned. The house was built in 1882 and remains in good condition. The upside down version of the Creel House is, on the other hand, all fragmented pieces and not CGI. Number 12. Do you think they knew ahead of time this location would come back? They filmed at Stone Mountain Cemetery in Stone Mountain, Georgia. It's the same cemetery they used for Barb's funeral in season two. Prep for the cemetery took a lot more work than it may seem. Just expect that when you've got stunts involved, that requires rigs. And Sadie's stunt was practiced off location before they moved on in. Number 13. We love the way they've been building up the world in subtle ways. The trailer park was briefly mentioned in season two when Nancy and Jonathan said it was a good place to meet with Barb's mother, but didn't make a real appearance until this season. Forest Hills was filmed at a real trailer park in Griffin, Georgia. Number 14. Anybody remember that phone number? While the chain may not be real, Walmart did partner with Stranger Things for some frozen pizzas. Did you manage to snag your own for binge watching? The shots were filmed in Los Lunas, New Mexico, and they also had multiple Surfer Boy pizza vans on site too. But the first van they went with just did not do the trick. While it looked really cool, it just didn't have the space they needed on the inside. So they switched to a VW. We shot like a stoner thriller comedy, kind of. Number 15. Not an ideal way to spend a day, but anything for the shot, we suppose. Penhurst Mental Hospital is located in Atlanta and shot in Georgia. While the building was closed in 1987, it was reopened as a Halloween attraction. Both the interior and exterior of this scene were filmed on location, other than Victor Creel's cell scene, which was filmed in studio. It was like so fun and, and like different. We can always count on Stranger Things to deliver the best 1980s sets. Even Benny's Burgers made a small appearance, but seeing it all boarded up just breaks our little hearts. You belong here with me. Not only does Max get trapped in Vecna's mind lair, but Sadie Sink's experience filming the scene really wasn't all that different. We'll be going through the effects, the set, the intense stunts, and bloody water Sadie had to carefully wade through, as well as the emotional aspects behind choosing the song Running Up That Hill. There were a lot of terrifying moments, scrapes, bruises, and some stellar acting involved in the making of this iconic scene. Max. 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 You're not 
really here? Oh, but I am Max. We know by now that the visual effects team on Stranger Things works overtime in order to give us incredible scenes like this. Now Vecna, when he told Max he was really there, he definitely wasn't lying. The actor, Jamie Campbell Bauer, spent over six hours a day in the makeup chair to look that good. If it was like a 7 a.m. crew call, oh, he would have to come in at 1 a.m. What? The morning before, while well, they put the makeup on him as Vecna. And apparently, Jamie never complained about it. He was super patient throughout the entire process. When shooting the mind layer scene, that was the first time Sadie Sink had seen Jamie in his Vecna prosthetics. To say she was scared is definitely an understatement. Part of the reason why Stranger Things looks so incredible is that they try to use as many practical effects and set pieces as they can, instead of solely relying on CGI. We always try to combine real art department constructed environments with these digital elements. The director, Sean Levy, wanted to make the actor's job as easy as possible. The more you can practically build, the more you're helping your actor do their job. In the shot where Max sees Chrissy's body mounted up on a pillar, Sadie actually had a real-life dummy to react to. They altered the way it looked with special effects. But ultimately, it was just a dummy covered in glycerin. Chrissy's dead body didn't look as good as it looks in the finished product. It's hard not to be impressed with the Stranger Things production team. They love to build as many practical pieces as they can. This set is no different. Set was pretty impressive. It was like a full-on platform that was built on a sound stage. The only part of the set they couldn't create in a practical way was the sky. It was surprisingly just a blue screen, but obviously you would never know after the visual effects team takes over. Otherwise, all of the major set pieces, like the pillars and the rocky ground, were built by the art department. She was standing in a real rocky, bloody kind of pan. Sadie had to be really careful walking through it because it was insanely slippery. She definitely left with a few scrapes and bruises, but we'll get into that in a little bit. One really important piece of this set was the winding staircase, which, of course, was a totally real, practical set piece. It played a big role in regards to the camera work and framing of the scene. It allowed me to frame the expanse of the mind layer and to also do shots behind that staircase. Sean Levy finds it helpful to have a practical element like the staircase in the foreground when figuring out how to frame a shot. Before moving on, we have to give a shout out to Kate Bush. Max wouldn't have made it through this daunting set without her. Fun fact, the Duffer brothers and their music supervisor, Nora, both separately chose Running Up That Hill to be Max's escape song. They thought the lyrics really rang true to Max's narrative of trying to overcome her trauma and complex feelings about what happened to Billy. I am here, Max, to end no. your suffering once and for all. Thanks, Kate. You're definitely bringing in all the feels for this one. Although Sadie had a lot to work with in regards to Vecna's scare factor and the highly detailed set, there were still a handful of moments where she essentially had to react to nothing. For example, Vecna's vines, which are a key component in the scene, weren't there at all. None of that was there, so that was kind of just like strained my arms and my neck to make it look like there was something wrapped around them. There were also quite a few wipeouts and intense stunts that both Sadie and her stunt double had to perform. There was like a rope tied to my ankle and then dragged me across the floor. Something else you might not know is that during Max's escape, you know, when things are crashing down from the sky, none of that was there either. So Sadie is bobbing and weaving and faking it, basically. The entire scene took about a week to shoot, and it had a strenuous rehearsal process. Sadie spent a lot of time in the harness in preparation for the cemetery levitation shot. Hey guys! What up? Yeah. Four seasons in, and the cast of Stranger Things are definitely not strangers to ridiculous onset antics. So, of course, we're taking a look at all the wholesome content the cast gave us in season four. That's what it looks like underneath. Can you believe that? What a reveal. Yeah, it's a reveal. Number one. Get your bets in now. The race is about to begin. Three, two, one. One, and they're off. Millie Bobby Brown starts off with an early lead. Noah Schnapp seems to have developed a tummy ache. Will he be able to recover in time to beat Millie? No one can say for certain, but Millie doesn't seem to be slowing down. In fact, she's gaining speed, and her challenger is ducking out of the race. Is this it for Noah? He's down and out. Millie Bobby Brown is victorious. 
Millie slayed at the Fruit by the Foot challenge against Noah Schnapp, who gagged. Tough luck, Noah. We wish you better luck in the Fruit Roll-Up challenge. Number two. Did you hear Millie and Noah made a pact to marry at 40 if they aren't married already? But they would basically need to have separate houses because, hate to break it to you, they're just friends. That doesn't stop us from shipping them, though. Maybe it isn't too late for their characters. Sorry, Finn. The roller skating fail between Millie and Noah is just clumsy, cute, absolute ridiculousness on wheels. <laughs> I just grabbed the boobs. Whoopsie daisy. Number three. Finn took an arrow, just not to the knee. Whoa! If that's a metaphor for marriage, what does it mean to take one to the head? Ow! We could watch this all day. I didn't realize it would be so big. These are honestly the kinds of Stranger Things moments that we live for. Sorry, could we go back? That's so ridiculous. <laughs> yes, let's watch this part again. Ow! Ow! Number four, exterior shot, sunrise, extreme close-up on quesadilla. Picture this. It's 5.30 in the morning. After a long night shoot, you've fallen asleep in your chair, cozied up beneath a thin blanket for a 20-minute nap. There's a little bit of light in the horizon, and I open my eyes, and Caleb and Gaten are just sitting across from me, staring ahead, eating a full-size, like, quesadilla. Sadie Sink just finds the idea of Gaten and Caleb going to town on a quesadilla at 5.30 in the morning absolutely hilarious for no good reason. Why not cereal? Or eggs. No, no. 5.30 is quesadilla time. Number five. That feel when your favorite moment on set is also your least favorite. Finn's favorite moment had to do with one long shot, filled with complex choreography, including swooping, ducking, and sneaking. We only had like three chances at it. The characters were ambushed, and all of the choreography was complex as they attempted to escape the house unscathed. We gotta go! We gotta go right now! The actors were utterly exhausted by the end of this one shot. They went through all the hard stuff. It had all gone perfectly, at least up until the very last guy. A soldier's supposed to come in and get shot and then like shoot his gun up in the air. And that's it, end of sequence. And then the camera whips to the door and a soldier is not there. So the director calls cut and everybody's miserable. We have to do favorite we memory? Have to do no, no, it's coming. Everybody's collapsed to the ground, heavy breathing, and then suddenly, Boom. A door gets kicked in, <laughs> and the stunt guy's like, <laughs> and then shoots his gun up in the air. So he goes through his whole thing and then collapses to the ground. But the worst part? And then he got up and he was like, I think that went well. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Number six, smile, you're on camera. We need to find out an outfit that I get arrested in. I've never thought I'd ever have to say that sentence out loud. There are a lot of things you never anticipate saying in life, but when you take a job in the arts, anything is possible, like blowing things up with your mind. Number seven, we know you look completely ridiculous out there, but you've got to keep it together, Millie. Perhaps Millie couldn't help from laughing because she's hyper aware of the fact she looks 11 years old and bald and is dressed in a hospital gown in the middle of a parking lot. Reasons for why one would find themselves in this situation? Maybe she just signed herself out of the hospital for a little day trip to the local Target because she can't stand the taste of hospital food and needs some waffles. Hey, it's one theory. Not a good one, but it's a theory. Brown. I hate Eggos. Number eight. What do you call the ball with feathers on the end? Sorry, actors don't know much about sports usually. Sports are dangerous. Look at poor Charlie, he's proof. And sports are even more dangerous if you're an actor pretending to be good at them. That's going to be a long recovery process. There's a reason the drama geeks and the athletes don't get along. Take it from Stranger Things. Number nine, it's like video games, but in real life. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, it's more like playing video games with your annoying brother who likes to make every sound effect himself. Boom, boom sound effects just aren't half as effective as the real thing, we must say. <laughs> Number 10. All work and no play makes the cast dull, dull children. This is why we had to share with you all the instances of them dancing with questionable levels of enthusiasm. Why do all the actors like to film themselves dancing like fools? What was their motivation? Number 11. They may be dancing fools, but Gaten is the worm king. 
Just look at him go. The Worm King could almost be season five's villain. Hear that, Duffer Brothers? Pull a WandaVision and make it Gaten all along. Number 12. Actors only need a passable knowledge of most things. When you're a child actor, you hardly need that either. You could say actors are the biggest example of jack of all trades, master of practically nothing. That feel when your stunt double is way better at roller skating than you. Sometimes life just isn't fair. But we bet Noah Schnapp is making way more money for doing way less of the dangerous stunts. So the joke's actually on talented people. Number 13. You know what's worse than socks with sandals? Socks with bowling balls. And the secret is only good if you don't drop the ball. Then you're in serious trouble. He was probably just trying to save a couple bucks on rental shoes. And who can blame him for trying to snag a good deal? Perhaps he could become a trendsetter. Number 14. Yes, this season of Stranger Things seems to include a lot of sport, which means a lot of dangerous sports ball activities. Like having to learn to drive golf balls. Charlie Heaton and Eduardo Franco got really good at it. But ridiculously, their training did not come in handy. Well, it did, but it didn't. Jonathan and Argyle were totally out of their minds during that scene, so it isn't like the golfing needed to be good per se. What was I supposed to do? Not lie! Not lie! Yeah! Not lie! So hey, free golfing trip. Number 15. Listen closely. Charlie Heaton's unlocked the secret to acting. You got this, man. Just me and you in here. That's what acting is. Serious acting. Thank you, Charlie. We will never forget your wisdom. What we want to know is who his acting partner is that needs such wise wisdom. The cameraman? Or is it us? If so, we're flattered. Number 16. Caleb's imagining things. Remember the, like, the scene that we did like, with that one thing and it smelled weird? What are you talking about? I know. It was pretty funky. Guess it was just Caleb smelling it. <laughs> you remember? It was like, no, I don't remember what smelled, man. And you know what they say? Whoever smelt it, dealt it. However, he who denied it, supplied it. So, Gaten, we're looking at you. Number 17. Sometimes it's the little things. Sometimes it's the micro things. There's the popsicle situation where everyone found themselves way too fascinated with a trail of ants. It was kind of a rough day, I remember, but the ice pops made it like... <sighs> on one incredibly long and stressful day on set, the cast was treated to a delicious icy treat. But the ants also wanted a taste. So Gaten had this bright idea that they could lead them away with a trail of popsicle juice. This theory never got to be tested because somebody sprayed the ants. But the actors seemed to be so fascinated by this situation that Sadie Sink even got a photo. This leaves us with one question. Why? Just why? Between that and the quesadillas, Sadie finds the oddest things interesting. Number 18. Time for a rewind back to the best of season three. Millie Bobby Brown and Sadie Sink really got to bond during the filming of season three, and sometimes the wardrobe department does their job and makes complimentary colors condiment each other. Uh, meant to say compliment each other. My name's Ketchup and my name is Mustard. Together we Ketchup and Mustard. Ketchup and Mustard, the musical. Coming to a theater near you, no time soon. And not such good condiments on popcorn, which is why this musical's a flop. Number 19. The paper towel part of this sport isn't dangerous, it's what comes next. We're not really sure what we just saw. When you cheat at paper towel ball, prepare to get slapped, we guess? Is that a rule or foul play? We don't know. But the idea of a sport that is both soft and gentle and good at cleaning up spills that's also an aggressive contact sport sounds just so intriguing. Number 20. When kids see things that look like slides, they're inclined to use them as such. <laughs> We don't think you're supposed to slide down that. Seriously, there are signs and everything. But you know what? It saves a ton of time, so we know what we're doing next time. Mall security be darned. Stranger Things Season 4 has the best of everything when it comes to 80s wardrobe, makeup, and hairstyles, as well as creepy prosthetics. This means thousands of hours dedicated to the makeup chair that we're taking a little peek behind the scenes at. Number 1. Even Vecna's claw is all practical effects. 
Vecna is 90% prosthetics. Jamie Campbell Bauer had to have 2,425 different appliances on him. When they initially tested the prosthetic, it took them roughly eight and a half hours, but they managed to whittle that down to six. So, for a 7 a.m. start time, he would be in the chair at 1 a.m. Every part of him was covered in some way. He had dentures over his teeth that looked rotten and blackened. He had contact lenses. And Vecna's left hand was also done with practical effects, using a metal framework. The only thing that was really done in post was his veins or vines or whatever you want to call them. Number 2. It takes effort to get that no effort look Eleven was going for. Hi guys, I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm just waiting on my coffee. While it may not seem like Jane, sorry, Eleven puts much work into her outfits, behind the scenes is a whole other story. I think it takes about, I'd say an hour. Why is that the case when she barely wears any makeup? The most I have is a bit of mascara and some blush. Well, out of all the young cast, Millie Bobby Brown takes the longest. A full hour to get ready because of her wig. Yeah, we need to find out an outfit that I get arrested in. I've never thought I'd ever have to say that sentence. <laughs> and Millie and Noah have way too much energy for it being early in the morning. Uh, good morning! Good morning. You know who doesn't seem like a morning person? Who we bet finds this peppy enthusiasm annoying? Joe Keery. Number three. You'd think if you were possessed, the last thing you'd see is white. The white contacts were no picnic. Wearing them was described as being in a bright white room all by yourself. The first time the actors put on the white contacts, the costume designer filmed their experience to try and make it an event and take the stress off their inability to see properly. Oh, um, did they put contacts in you? Yeah. Were they uncomfy? Yeah. Number four. There isn't enough money in the world somebody could offer us to do this role. Robert England played Victor Creel, who, once in costume, could neither speak nor see, and his hands were bound to the chair. He could only communicate through yes or no questions and nods. It took him about two hours in the makeup chair. He just loved telling the makeup artists, who were huge fans of his work as Freddy Krueger, stories. He's incredibly comfortable with all the materials after years of using them, so he knew what they were all for. He knew when to close his eyes and turn his head, and the makeup artists just loved him. Number 5. Gaten's invented a whole new hairstyle called Hat Hair Supreme. Heading up to my trailer. Looks like the sun is still just rising, so Gaten Matarazzo definitely didn't have to spend six hours in a chair. I'm about to go get ready, put on my uniform. Let's get it. Gaten is sent home with some really amazing skincare products. And I never use them. And you might not have known, his hair is perfectly slicked back under that hat. And it looks ridiculous. We don't know. That could be a style, you know, like a horizontal mullet situation. Business on top. Dustin takes just slightly more time than Finn. He's in the 20-25 minute range, but if he has a cap on, which he usually does, then it takes even less time. Gaten's character Dustin has been starting to put more effort into his looks too. Fair faucet spray? Yeah, fair faucet. If you're hoping to get Steve's luscious long locks, you're out of luck. The product is no longer produced. I should probably go to work now. Number six. Finn basically gets to roll out of bed and right onto the set. Hi. Finn has it easy compared to all the actors who take ages getting prosthetics on. Yeah, it's, I, I become like in 20 minutes. It's about the time. So I think you, you might be the fastest right now. Well, he's competing for best time with another member of the cast. Can you guess who? Number seven. David had a major transformation from season three to four, then back to three again briefly. David must be the, now must be the, the shortest. Okay, but he's covered in dirt and prosthetics. He doesn't have as much hair though this season. Makeup. Makeup. David was prepping long before shooting began because he had to trim down his dad bod to look like the roughed up malnourished hopper we see this season. For flashback purposes, Harbor had to get decked out in prosthetics again because his face just looked too thin. Harbor's pretty comfortable with gaining and losing weight for roles. This is not even close to the first time he's done it. Although we bet putting on the weight is much more fun. Number eight. Best wig award goes to Joseph Quinn. 
give them what they want. Yes, this was the wig, and Eddie Munson, the character, that we never knew we needed out of Stranger Things. Number 9. Then they placed it on his head, and he became Dustin Henderson. A lot of people don't realize that the hat was never planned. It was never meant to be such a defining character trait. We just went to the fitting rooms one day, and then they had some baseball cap. Not just Gaten. All of the characters were trying on hats. And I put one on and was like, that's funny. They did it for one photo. A goofy hat for one shot, and it just stuck. The rest is history. Number 10. Do those suction cup things actually stick or not? Why is it so giant? I didn't realize it would be so big. An oversized arrow on your forehead all day would get pretty annoying, we bet. Number 11. Answer revealed. Finn is tied with Sadie for being such low maintenance. Perhaps that's because everyone but the Sadie Sink is decked out in wigs and prosthetics and makeup, and she's still just the cool skater kid who doesn't really care. Plus, her natural hair is gorgeous. Why would you cover that up? She only takes 20 minutes to get ready, too. Hair is typically 10 minutes. Makeup is five minutes, and that's another five for costume. It's seriously just not fair to the others. It's not that bad. We would guess Noah would be pretty quick, too, but alas, the poor boy is wigged. He'd be more in the Millie department. Number 12. The lost boy can be found buried beneath dirt and sugar. Cornelius made a small appearance, but left a lasting impression on all of us. His makeup was inspired by Lost Boys, and one small detail we appreciate is that they put lip gloss on his lips to make it look like he'd been eating sticky candy. The dirt is in the details. Number 13. The return of Dacre means the return of more ridiculous prosthetics for him. If the gooey prosthetics mess at the end of the day is any indication of how nasty the application process was, <laughs> it had to equal early mornings. And they not only had to do all these prosthetics on Dacre, they also had to duplicate them on his stunt double. Imagine having double the work because the actors are too valuable to break. Number 14. We call this one Road Rash Chic. We adore seeing a sleepy Joe pre Farrah Fawcett wandering in to get his day started. His road rash prosthetics were done by Autonomous FX. The prosthetics look disgusting, if we do say so ourselves. Good job, team. Number 15. These wee beans were all having fun the whole shoot. It's too bad their characters weren't. It's no secret that all of the patients in the asylum look just a bit sickly, and Peter Ballard is no exception. The goal was to suck the life out of their skin, and they did that with a color-correcting cream in intended to neutralize redness. Outside of Jamie Campbell Bauer, the patients also got an added layer of wrinkle FX makeup. Number 16. Wigs are at least 30% of the personality of this show. Look at my wig. Fabulous fit. Kara, who plays Karen Wheeler, got to wear an awesome wig this season. The very Vogue look of 1986. It's cut with shorter layers on top to show off that fabulous perm. The look was inspired by Kate Capshaw in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Number 17. Would you cut your hair for a role? Grace had her hair cut for the role of Chrissy. Nothing over the top, they just trimmed it a bit shorter to give it some beautiful volume. She had it dyed with highlights to match the topper wig, which are used to add volume to thin hair. Number 18. Sometimes simple is best. Agent Harmon, the man who gets shot trying to move the kids to safety, had to deal with a ton of blood. The makeup artist said, This was a fun, bloody mess of a makeup. We bet it wasn't too difficult, though. Less gutsy than some of their other stuff. Dacre, we're looking at you. Number 19. Why does this one give us scarecrow vibes? It's the nose. Definitely the nose. Even without CGI, this would make for a fun Halloween costume. Number 20. We wish there were more shows set in the 80s. The aesthetic is just perfect if you ask us. It screams fun. Something that is totally lacking in this generation. Millie Bobby Brown is an intense actor. Some may say she is even going a bit method. So she gets herself into some painful situations for the sake of her art. Ready to find out what made her vomit? Or how about how she navigated her broken knee? Number 1. This is why actors sign contracts that they won't engage in dangerous activities. I have, uh, 
slit my kneecap. While this incident didn't happen on the set of Stranger Things, it was still healing while Millie was filming, and so she leaned on her stunt double for support. Her double not only had to do all of her stunts, but even some of the simpler tasks too, like riding a bicycle. Hey, they should have put her in the basket, like they did with E.T. That was the inspiration for Eleven. Number two, how did women used to wear these all the time? For Enola Holmes, Millie was wearing such a tight-laced corset that it was painful for her, and she struggled with her fight scenes. Fighting in a dress is never easy, but luckily, the director had the forethought to use the dress as a tool rather than ignore its existence. Do not be deterred from wearing a corset, though. You actually have to do waist training to get your waist used to the shape in stages. And if you think it's such an outdated thing, ear stretching is not all that different of a concept. But actors generally don't have the time for waist training and suffer through squishing their organs instead. Number three, this scenario seems like it was totally avoidable with a little forethought. Due to the cold temperature that they were filming Stranger Things in, Millie struggled to do a scene in which she was submerged in freezing cold water. They did try to heat the pool, but it was just too shallow to retain any heat. Did anybody think about, hmm, maybe heating the air as well? Number four, while Vecna may not be as spooky as the smoky dude from the previous season, he was physically there on set. Jamie Campbell Bower messed Millie up, filming Stranger Things. His character was so far from himself when he transformed from Henry into Vecna that it freaked Millie out and made her cry. Bauer said she was terrified, like literally terrified, and when she saw Vecna, she burst into tears and she said, that's not my friend. I don't know who this person is anymore. Where's he gone? Was this acting? Jamie was the one having a hard time getting through the scene. Maybe Millie just messed him up. Number five, the bullies were a tad cliche, but that doesn't take away from Millie's experience. Filming the bullying for season four of Stranger Things also mentally messed with Millie. Say that five times fast. The scene at the Rinkomania where everyone is pointing made her incredibly distressed and sad. It also hit Noah Schnapp really hard, having to just witness it and not be able to help at all. Number six, did the Duffers forget they were working with children? Millie was exhausted from overworking herself on set. Long days, not enough sleep, and mentally straining scenes led her to collapsing into Finn Wolfhard's arms, weeping from sheer exhaustion. The scene actually made it into the show, and you can see in the shot Finn break character and look up for help. Luckily, the panic is as real as his character could have mustered up. We hope after that they let the poor girl take a nap. Number seven, just the name of this stunt sounds dangerous. The corkscrew move Millie pulled in Enola Holmes can get you all twisted up if done wrong. Talk about another knee injury waiting to happen. You can see in the movie how she does get twisted up too. Number eight, Millie is not a huge fan of any stunts done on wires, but one Stranger Things stunt left her so dizzy she vomited. So I had to do like a rotation one once where I was just constantly going upside down, which kind of sucked. After spinning around and around in circles, take after take, of course she vomited. Number nine, Millie's made of bricks just like the wall she's being thrown against, we swear. For Enola, Millie was thrown up against a wall 15 times in a row. She totally just brushes it off, but man, does that look painful. Number 10, the key to great acting is to show up with your lines half memorized. Millie said filming Enola being drowned was very safe. She was in total control, but because of the quick loss of oxygen, she could only stick her head under for about 15 seconds. She went into the scene with her lines memorized five minutes before, so she could give a genuine performance of stumbling over her words. Number 11, can somebody get her a tea or something? Millie lost her voice like four times during the filming of Stranger Things because she had to scream so much. Then she lost her voice again when she returned to the booth for ADR. Well, this is all fine and well when you're young, you want to be careful doing this stuff long term or there could be serious repercussions. Number 12, the mind may know acting isn't real, but the body doesn't. The reunion between Eleven and Callie was intense for Millie. Not only did it just make her weepy, but she also took her work home with her, and it was just so overwhelming. Fans are waiting with breath that was baited for the final episodes of Stranger Things. And they are literally chomping at the bit to know all the behind the scenes secrets of the show. Let's take a look of who's got the spiciest info from the show at this moment. There's a crew favorite. Like any aspect of life, there's just gonna be people that you favor more. And sure, this might seem kind of mean, but hey, let's be honest. Most parents have a favorite child. So why wouldn't the crew have a favorite cast member? 
according to an interview from The High Chair. In a case of Answer Now, a crew member sheepishly admitted that Millie Bobby Brown is definitely the crew's favorite. Sorry to the rest, but the writing's on the wall. Now, the wall may be upside down, but still, it's a tiring show. While being an actor seems to be a dog's breakfast of a career with assistants, fancy premieres, and all the craft table treats a tummy could handle. However, the hours are most definitely long, so it makes sense that people will be needing all the downtime possible, especially Charlie Heaton, who was notorious for napping it up all over set. From his trailer to just off set, we've got ourselves a sleepy guy. Off script. Sure, the actors on set are younger than your average cast, but from Noah Schnapp to Millie Bobby Brown, these are some professionals to the core. But they also love to spill the hot goss, and according to these two in real life besties, of all the cast members who go off book all the way, Finn Wolfhard loves to mix it up line-wise. And while there's a few scenes that are improvised from being in on it, also known as when Millie Bobby Brown's character collapsed into Finn's arms from pure emotional exhaustion. But whatever the reason why Finn loves the off-script ways, it's for sure working. Breaking is the funnest part. Let's be frank, everyone loves a blooper reel. Entire television shows have been based around this concept. And let's be honest, the post-credit blooper scenes of a movie may be the whole reason to sit through a movie. And when it comes to who on the cast was the ultimate in breaking, it could definitely be counted on Gaten Matarazzo to bring in the funny. And co-star Sadie Sink can attest to Gaten being too, too funny. It's been Gaten. She had a tough time keeping it together in whatever scene the two of them were in together, calling his style of comedy genius. Here's hoping we get to see the lighter side of Gaten in his projects to come. An actor prepares. Noah Schnapp, who portrays the sweet Will Byers from day one had intensely emotional scenes. And for the most prestigious actor, a day of high-intensity emotions is a challenge. But a way to get into it for those crying scenes, Noah, ironically enough, turned to movies. A trick learned from fellow co-star Millie Bobby Brown. When the tears needed to flow, Noah watches a sad scene from a favorite movie and it gets the job done. According to Noah, the movie that does the trick these days is the A24 critics fave, everything, everywhere, all at once. The Breaker Gets Broken. And while we all now know that Gaten Matarazzo is funny, who's the one to make the breaky break? Look no further than Caleb McLaughlin. The actor who portrays Lucas Sinclair has a laugh that can break a thousand scenes. And according to Gaten, Caleb has a laugh to make a stone statue giggle. Aww, so cute. Music to make up to. Fans truly cannot get enough of the upside down, Vecna, and all things monster on Stranger Things. The special effects are award-worthy and spellbinding, but what that actually means for the actors is more time in the makeup chair. And long, long hours of makeup application can make the mind wander, especially if you're being covered in prosthetics and literally cannot move a muscle. In these scenarios, it's good to have music on your side. According to lead makeup artist Jamie Campbell Bauer, says that in tough times of makeup application, playing music makes the day go better. And from all the music in the world to pass the time, they decide to pump Marilyn Manson to go hand in hand with the monster theme. The beautiful people indeed. Uber Eats to the rescue! A big set secret is craft services is usually the bomb. Actors and set guests alike flock to enjoy the treats to break up the long hours of shoot day. And fortunately, actor Noah Schnapp had to admit that the food on set is really just… okay. Therefore, actors like Noah tended to make their own food and Uber Eats ordered on the regular. Wonder what the Vecna's go-to order is? Let's get rowdy. In a high chair interview with Gaten Matarazzo, when asked what the tone of the set was like, the one and only word that came to mind was rowdy. And that can definitely be felt with the tone and chemistry of the set. And Gaten said his character in season two got to spend all his scenes with characters Lucas and Max. And come season three, he will spend most scenes with Steve, Robin, and Priya. So the partying is apparent. And I think I can speak for all fans when I ask, invite us to the next jam, please and thanks. One Take Tammy. When it comes to professionalism on set, young actors do not tend to have the best reputation. Coming from the era of the low hands and the lovados, reputations may precede child actors before they even hit the set. However, the Stranger Things cast is breaking the mold once again by bringing the seriousness. And when it comes to preparation being on point, actor Sadie Sink has confirmed that the actors who could do a scene in one take award goes to Joe Keery, who plays Steve, and Gaten Matarazzo, who portrays Dustin Henderson. According to Sadie, these two actors are so prepared, it's in and out of scenes like a fiddler's elbow baby. Noah the Spiller. 
Fun fact about Noah Schnapp, this boy always needs a Tide to Go stick constantly. As someone who is a self-identified spiller, Noah, who has been known to ruin a costume or two, on the first day of shooting a movie, he ended up spilling chocolate sauce all along his back. Here's hoping laundry's on set. Maya Hawke's fave scene. Celebrity offspring Maya Hawke joined Stranger Things in season three and immediately became a fan favorite with her portrayal of Robin Buckley. But if the people were wondering which scene was a favorite to Maya herself, she had the answer up and ready. In season three, a sincere two-hander between Robin and Steve at the video store that was shot in one take was the scene of the moment for her. A chance for Maya and Joe Keery to truly connect as actors is all she really wanted. And the audience and fans were living for it. It was perfect. But? The shootout in one shot. Near the end of season four, there's a seminal shootout scene. Yeah, it was crazy. Upon reading the script for that scene, director Sean Levy had a stroke of creative inspiration that made him realize, to properly capture the essence of this scene, he wanted to shoot the shootout in one shot. And while movies often employ this camera work, think the walk to the Copa in Goodfellas. Executing this kind of camera work in the fast pace of a television show is a great feat. And props to director Sean Levy because this scene had all the feels and more. Color Matters Costume designer of Stranger Things Amy Paris has remarked that the colors of the clothing really matter, with subtle hints to keep the audience in keeping with the emotional story they want to tell. It's also fun tying certain outfits together with colors and pieces. For example, the colors remained dark and moody for scenes in Russia, and then they pop hard when the pool days come. So if you're an audience member wondering why they're feeling what they're feeling, look no further than color theory. Wild rehearsal times. The cast and director, executive producer Sean Levy, all could agree that the shootout scene for the series was the most intense. Planning for a scene that will only be shot in one take means everyone has to be on their A-game all the time, non-stop. And in terms of rehearsing, the cast had to be relentless. Behind the scenes, the cast was choreographing and getting prepared to do it all in one take. Therefore, the cast through and through all agreed that prepping for that shot was the rehearsal of all rehearsals. We'll say hi. Despite joining the show late, Sadie Sink has really been running up that hill to become one of our favorite actors in Stranger Things. So we're taking a look back at how she's grown over the course of the show. A lot of time spent in the harness, I guess. Number one, growing up on set, you can expect a lot of your firsts to happen there too. Sadie Sink's first kiss happened on the show at the end of season two. She wasn't too keen on it, so the Duffer brothers teased, well, now we have to include a kiss. Truly, they were only teasing, of course. And Sadie wasn't perturbed, saying she wouldn't have done it if she didn't feel comfortable. And hey, the nice thing about your first kiss being with your friend is you'll never cringe when you remember it like you will if things didn't end so nicely with your boyfriend. I'm not mad at it. Number two, use the force, Max. Hitting your head is a better option than facing the wrath of Max. Can we play this back in slow motion? Maybe zoom in a little this time? Beautiful. Just beautiful. Number three. We do not relish in the thought of these characters ever growing up. You may recall the most terrifying part of Stranger Things was the condiment bottles. My name's Ketchup and my name is Mustard. One thing's for sure. They're barbecued. Together we Ketchup and Mustard. Maybe they can get the rest of the cast in on this. How has nobody asked the boys if they could be a condiment which one they'd be? Who do you think would play mayo? Finn? Noah? And what about hot sauce? We think we'd leave that to Dacre. Forget Vecna. The Demogorgon should have evolved into a hot dog for season four's villain. Number four. And a hot dog Demogorgon would have been the perfect foil for Sadie Sink, who is a proud vegan. She's an animal lover through and through. Cast your bets now. Is Sadie Sink a cat or a dog person? The answer is pretty apparent. Sit. <laughs> <gasps> she can be spotted playing with doggos at every chance she gets, and there are oddly a lot of those chances on set. This is Rocky. She loves belly rubs. Over her last few years on the set, Sadie went from being a vegetarian to fully vegan. This is Sig. It's short for Sigourney, and she is a rescue dog. Number five. Well, Vecna was definitely no hot dog, but the outfit was pretty real. Sadie felt incredibly lucky to not have to work with another CGI monster, and instead work with Jamie Campbell Bauer in a mostly practical Vecna prosthetic. Which kind of, you know, made it easier for me so I'm not like staring at a man in a green suit. 
She spent somewhere between four days to a week in the lair. The shoot was intense. Got a little scraped up, but it was really, really fun. It definitely wasn't as intense as it was for Jamie, though. For a 7 a.m. shoot, he'd be in at 1 a.m. to get his prosthetics on. We bet he's jealous of Sadie with her quick change in the morning. Number six. The change takes a little bit longer than a Broadway quick change, but in the grand scheme of film, it's fast. Max is one of the lower maintenance characters. It only takes Sadie 20 minutes to get ready for the day. So hair, makeup, and costume. She takes less maintenance for a TV show than we take getting ready for work in the morning. Unless you're working from home, then showers and pants are optional. As opposed to her co-star Millie, who takes an hour when she needs to get that wig on. Those 40 minutes of beauty sleep really make a difference. Number seven, that feel when you're having a power nap because your 20 minutes of getting your costume on in the morning are exhausting and the boys just wreck it. One of Sadie's favorite moments from season four was incredibly odd. It was 5.30 in the morning and she'd fallen asleep in her chair. She woke up to the sounds of birds chirping and the sun just beginning to rise and it was just beautiful. But then she opened her eyes and, and there were Gaten and Caleb eating a giant chicken quesadilla at 5.30 in the morning. And she just thought it was the most hilarious thing. <laughs> <Going I'm going laughs> to Number eight, she's rising on up in the world. Season four brought in a new stunt for Sadie Sink. Like this is the most elaborate form of harness harnessing that I've ever done. Of course, the episode was a show stopper. If you can get past a few of the cheesier visual effects in Vecna's lair, Sadie's performance was fantastic. I don't know how many, I think it might've been a week that we spent on that or like four days, I guess. The simplicity of her arc and the downplayed feelings of the character were perfection. It's no wonder the world has become obsessed with her this season. But her levitating stunt is probably the biggest stunt she's ever got to do in her short career. She's growing up so fast, hard to believe she's already 20. They gave her rehearsal time, which we imagine they do not give to the more seasoned actors to simply float in the air for a few seconds. But there was a whole element of choreography to it. I can lean back a little bit less. Sort of. Number nine. The Stranger Things cast actually spends more time apart than together. So Sadie's pretty lucky she gets to spend it with the funniest guy in the cast. It's been Gaten. He's been making me break character a lot recently. Caleb also makes her crack up from time to time, but Gaten takes the trophy for season four. Sadie was also grateful that the casts got shuffled around and some unlikely pairings happened because it meant she got to spend more time with new people, which she loves and she really bonded with Maya Hawk, who plays Robin. Is anybody else still stuck on Sadie's bemusement at the whole quesadilla situation? No, just us? Okay then. Number 10. Sometimes it really is the little things that amuse dear Sadie, like the 5.30 quesadilla. Popsicle day on the set of season four was ridiculous. As the cast were enjoying a refreshing snack, the ants wanted to join them. Because you had this idea where like, well, what if we made a trail of popsicle <sighs> juice? Did it work? Who can say for sure? Somebody came over and used some ant spray. Sadie thought this was fascinating enough to capture a photo of the first AD tutor holding out the popsicle though. Yeah, we can kind of see why Sadie's jealous of Millie Bobby Brown's social media game. Number 11. Imagine if your homework was to do the one thing that scared the pants off of you. Oh wait, that sounds a lot like school presentations. Well, Sadie's homework was a bit different. If you recall, she didn't join the cast until season two of Stranger Things. The latest passenger to join us on our curiosity voyage, Maxine. When it was already a massive hit. It's Max and she was terrified to watch the first season. She hates horror movies and had to keep turning down the volume or covering her eyes. She just couldn't do it. We wonder how she held up on set. Was it all demystified or did she live those darker moments in fear? Perhaps the show is easier to watch now that she's in it. Being fixated on her performance might just be enough of a distraction from those spooky, scary things. Number 12. We were a bit relieved when the show brightened up in season three as we imagine Sadie was too. The first two seasons of Stranger Things were set in the fall, so the costumes were more subdued. And Sadie's not a fall girl. She loves spring and summer fashion. She loves summer dresses. She loves color. So she loved that they got to play with the awesome 80s trends. Please play. Boy, is it serious around here. Why does the cast make Stranger Things season four look like the most fun anyone's ever had? 
Roller skating, golf lessons, ridiculous pranks? Where do we sign up? Actually, we're in Atlanta, but we don't say that. Number one. This was one of the few times the cast actually got to act off of monsters and not stuff like tennis balls on a stick. The prosthetics were 90% real for Vecna. The one thing added in post was pulsing veins. Jamie Campbell Bower's scene where Henry transforms into Vecna was so creepy that it made Millie cry. Bauer said, I was just fervently going through it and building it and it was a lot. I remember doing it in the rehearsal and Millie just looking at me and saying something like, you're a freak but it gets worse. While Henry transformed into Vecna, the speech he gave brought Millie to tears. She was so freaked out. Bauer admitted she was terrified, like literally terrified. And when she saw Vecna, she burst into tears and she said, that's not my friend. I don't know who this person is anymore. Where's he gone? Bauer found the moment incredibly challenging to not break because of how shaken Millie seemed. But freaking her out wasn't the only thing going wrong with the prosthetics. Bauer also struggled with finding the voice for Vecna. He had a great voice when he wasn't in the prosthetics, but the second he put them on, it became really hard to hear. But in the end, the voice he's using is all him. Number two, Sadie Sink is a rising star. Like this is the most elaborate form of harness harness scene that I've ever done. <laughs> Sadie's levitating stunt rehearsal happened to allow her to get comfortable using wires, a common courtesy we imagine isn't gifted to most actors. It must have been pretty unsettling with those white contacts in. Or are her eyes just rolled into the back of her head? Yeah. Hey, Number three, after being mostly bald for her young teen life, Millie decided enough was enough. Millie Bobby Brown refused to shave her head for the role again, so she spent an hour in the makeup chair getting the wig applied. As opposed to Finn Wolfhard, who takes 20 minutes for hair and makeup and he's ready to go. Ah, <sighs> it must be nice to be Finn and just be able to sleep in in the morning. Number four, can roller rinks please make a serious comeback? The roller skating scene was some of the most fun Millie Bobby Brown and Noah Schnapp had while filming season four. They loved it so much, they spent their breaks skating too. At one point, the two actors slammed into each other and crashed to the floor, accidentally causing an awkward groping situation. But that didn't deter them from getting back up and skating some more. Number five, taking an arrow to the knee was so 2011. An arrow to the forehead, however, is much more appealing. Whoa! Yes, Finn took an arrow to the head and managed to live to tell the tale. Sorry, could you go back? This is so ridiculous. <laughs> Every season of Stranger Things does seem just a little more ridiculous than the last, doesn't it? Ow. <laughs> Ow. Number six, need a hand there, Daker? Getting Dacre Montgomery's prosthetics off at the end of the day was a sticky mess. Is watching this making anybody else nauseous? It reminds us of the mind flayer in Eleven's leg. Ugh. Number seven. And here we thought contacts were supposed to help you see better. The designer had all the actors do videos their first time, trying out the new white contact lenses just to take the pressure off and add a little fun to the experience. Because the lenses were pretty trippy to wear. Oh man, did they put contacts in you? Yeah. Were they uncomfy? Yeah. <laughs> Number eight. The costumes just keep getting better with every season. And this season, they're just epic. How are they going to top this for the next one? Yeah, we need to find out an yes. outfit that I get arrested in. Did you know there could be up to five Eddie Munsons filming at one time? That's a nightmare for the costume department, who would have to source five identical costumes. Do you know how hard that is to do when you're thrift shopping? The kids' Dungeons & Dragons shirts were based on real ones from the 1980s and were made by a designer who actually plays the game. Costume designer Amy Paris said the Duffer Brothers were very specific about wanting it to look handmade, like it was made by the kids. And just a fun fact for you, when actors are running barefoot, it's actually up to the costume department to find them nude shoes. Number nine, we only wish our jobs required this kind of training, huh? Charlie Heaton and Eduardo Franco had to learn how to play golf for the show. They were whacking golf balls at an empty lot in the desert. Eduardo admitted, neither of us had ever played golf. So they took them to a country club and they had to dress the part. Eduardo went on to have a crazy day of learning how to drive a golf ball while he sipped on sodas and Charlie sipped on beer. He found it oh so satisfying to hear the ball pop when he whacked it right. But the irony of learning to do it all right was that the characters had to, in Eduardo's words, play the sport pathetically. 
Number 10. Free golfing, shooting hoops, we're actually jealous of all the fun they're having. Looks like, for Caleb McLaughlin, filming the basketball scenes were a ton of fun. And he's actually got some pretty sick moves. Also, that number eight jersey he's sporting is in honor of Kobe Bryant. Number 11. This genuinely sounds like torture. How did Christopher get through this? Sleeping? Christopher Strand had his eyes and mouth completely covered with prosthetics, and his hands tied to his easy chair for the role. This meant he couldn't see and he couldn't speak. He couldn't see, he couldn't speak, and he could barely move. In order to accommodate him the best they could, the crew could only ask him yes or no questions. So he could only communicate with a slight nod or shake of the head. Number 12. Seriously, now they're having freaking water balloon fights? What is this, work or play? Children, all of them. Yes, we're feeling an extreme case of FOMO. Noah Schnapp is quite the prankster on set, which is why the entire cast and crew took it upon themselves to seek revenge. Yes, they ruthlessly pummeled him with water balloons. Number 13. Teenagers are destructive little devils. The most dangerous game of pinata happened on set. Straight out of a wrestling match came Noah, dealing the final blow with a chair. Number 14. This sounds like a good name for a band. The scene where Eleven was being bullied and had a milkshake tossed on her was super taxing on Millie. It put her in a super sour mood. She recalls 50 people there laughing and pointing at her, and the bullying was so much she admitted, I remember feeling super distressed and really sad. She wasn't the only one feeling sad either. Her co-star Noah Schnapp also cried when he wasn't supposed to. Millie said to him, I don't know if anyone knows that, but you actually got really upset. Do you remember that? You weren't meant to cry in the scene. You just got naturally really emotional because it was actually quite distressing to watch. You've got your good days and you've got your bad days, we guess. That's what makes TV dramatic. Number 15. We don't need any old excuse to eat a fruit by the foot. On set, Millie absolutely obliterated Noah Schnapp in the fruit by the foot challenge. Noah gagged and gave up, but Millie was seeing this competition through to the end. No, using no hands, you have to eat it as fast as you can. It seems like everything on set is upside down from what we're seeing on TV. With plenty of pranks, games, and goofing off, it's no wonder these kids would rather be filming than in high school. If you could be part of any of these moments this season, which would you have picked? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for hanging out with us here at The Things.